have a lot to get to this morning from a story raising some questions about airline security to Omarosa's shocking interview with Savannah just over an hour ago. Did you see this? Oh, my goodness. We're going to get to it. And then we'll have the latest on the Meghan Markle family drama. Joining me now to discuss what's making the rounds today, NBC's Stephanie Gosk and Jenna Bush Hager, along with Matt Eisman, co-host of American Ninja Warrior. I love it. American Ninja Warrior. Okay, so we, can we start with this 29-year-old airline worker? Have you heard of the story? He, this guy was able to steal, steal an empty passenger plane. I mean, like a big one, 78-seater from Seattle's main airport and fly it around for an hour doing crazy stunts in the air before crashing, ending his own life. Now there are a lot of questions about why he did it and how he did it, how it could happen, and NBC's Hans Nichols has the story. Watch. Overnight, the FBI announcing they've recovered the plane's flight data and cockpit voice recorders. They hope that the black boxes will shed new light on what led to Richard Russell's high-flying joyride. On Friday, Russell flew this 76-seat commercial aircraft through the skies over Seattle. What the hell? After stealing the plane from SeaTac, one of the country's busiest airports, he talked to air traffic controllers while doing wild airborne stunts. All right, um, hey, pilot guy, can this thing do a, uh, a backflip, you think? Controllers questioning his experience as a pilot. Just flying the plane around, do you seem comfortable with that? Oh, hell yeah, it's a blast, man. I've played video games before, so I, uh, you know, I know what I'm doing a little bit. Flying upside down and doing loops, his aerial acrobatics stunning onlookers. And scrambling fighter jets in response. I'm going to try to do a barrel roll, and if that goes good, now I'm just going to nose down and call it a night. The flight ending in a fiery crash into an island in Puget Sound. Russell didn't survive. Amazingly, no others were hurt. He worked uh, his shift. I believe he was in uniform. For three and a half years, he was employed by Horizon Air, owned by Alaskan Air. The doors to the airplanes are not keyed like a car. The, uh, the, there's not an ignition key. A source close to the investigation says Russell used a towing tractor to back the plane onto a runway. The incident reveals a troubling security gap at our nation's airports, where thousands of ramp workers and mechanics have access to planes. This is something that Aviation security is not designed to prevent. It's not designed to, to try and defend against. Zachary Orr was shocked to learn his longtime friend was involved. He just wasn't that the type of person to do anything, anything dark, anything um, drastic. Russell's personality shining through in a YouTube video. So many bags. Look at all them bags. But his final trip ending in tragedy. Just a broken guy. Got a few screws loose, I guess. Never really knew it until now. Unbelievable. To me, every, all the reports about this guy are that he was kind, he was thoughtful, truly beloved. It wasn't like long history of problems, you know. It, it's, it's like some sort of a snap, some sort of a break. And, and where did he get the flight training? Uh, it's unbelievable. You know, there's so many different elements to this story, but the security question just is the one that sticks out the most for me. There's so many indignities when you travel, right? The plastic knife at breakfast, yep. the screening of your bags, all of the things that happen to you. My dry shampoo gets taken every time <laughs> I go through security. Totally. But you put up with it because you don't. You say, we need good yeah. security. This guy went through an unlocked door, turned a plane on without a key. How can that possibly be yep. the case? Well, he. I mean, let's, let's keep in mind, this guy was an employee. So clearly he's had some background checks yeah. to be on the tarmac, to be around the plane. So it's not as though this That's was, fair. it's not as though this was somebody who just walked in off the streets, <laughs> walked onto the yet. tarmac and got into a plane. But still, it does beg the question how he was able to, to take off in the plane. And I think there, there's just a certain amount of we can't vet for everything. And, and like we said, I mean, my guess is there's some mental illness yeah. involved here. Now, the yeah. question was, was he hiding it or was this something that was sudden onset? And we may not know. And what, what's hard to know is, based on all accounts, 
this was a normal guy. And even listening to him, I mean, he's making people laugh. This doesn't yeah. sound like a depressed guy. Yeah. But that statement, I, I, I'm, I guess I'm a guy who his, just has a few screws. And, and his friend gave a statement. His friend gave an interview, and we don't know. You can't diagnose CTE, you know, the, the yeah. brain disease that you get from repeated trauma to your head. And it, it, it can be slight traumas. Um, but his friend said they played football together, and, and his friend was saying, I believe he had something along mm. those lines. Now, we've never seen that result in, like, at this age, something rash like Although this. Although there have been some very young people with CTE. Yeah. There have. Yeah, there you have know, been. the fact that this happened and it was unbelievable that he could do these tricks, you know, it has people admiring him, but also his family, who is hurting, no doubt. You know, his wife, his, he said on the recording, I have people that love me that are going to hope I don't do this. Right. I think it really helped us realize that we talk about all these illnesses all the time, but the one that we don't talk about enough is mental illness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he was suffering from some other disease, it would have been talked about. There's still so much shame, and I think it's important we talk about it. Yeah, yeah that's right. I, I want to hear some, like, I want to hear, like, a psychiatrist analyze what we heard on that tape. You know, the sort of the playfulness and the willingness to do the tricks and all that right before you know you're, go you're going to He alluded die. to it. I'm yeah. just going to barrel roll, then nose this in and call yeah. it a night. Yeah. And that's what, that's what had, had he landed this plane and it just been a joyride, then it's a totally different story of a guy who just does something that everyone dreams of, taking yep. a plane out, who's played a video game. I don't, I don't dream of that. Yeah. But instead, yeah. you know, it's, it's really... I don't even like is, being a passenger no. on This is so heartbreaking it's a nightmare. Yeah. to think of a 29-year-old who's no longer around yeah. and leaves behind a wife There's, and parents. Well, hopefully now there will be some security measures taken. I mean, you know, it's like we do, our imaginations are limited sometimes in, in how to protect ourselves, but... You what know, we have been talking about today... Had that plane been flown yeah. into the space needle, absolutely right. Yeah. This would be they would a have totally completely revamped everything. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have to we have to shift from um, that interesting man and choice to Omarosa, <laughs> also an interesting person. Did you? Now I know you guys were waiting in like the holding area today before the show, but did you see the Omarosa interview with Savannah? Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple highlights. Um, she's got a new book out. You know, she left the White House. She was fired. And yesterday, I meet the press. She unveiled one soundbite she had taped General Kelly firing her, which was an interesting choice to let us all hear him telling her <laughs> she was fired uh, for integrity issues. And now today, she is Ironic. she's claiming <laughs> right. Today, she told Savannah um, in a very testy interview, not testy on Savannah's side, but on Omarosa's side. Um, shock! I know if you know Omarosa, you're shocked by that. Uh, that President Trump was caught on tape, according to her, using the N-word when he hosted The Apprentice and Celebrity Apprentice, and that she's heard it. She said that to Chuck Todd yesterday as well. Savannah got a few more details out of her. Listen here. Heard it. How long yes. is that tape? It's about three minutes. Is it audio or video? Because these are supposed to be camera out tape. It's audio. Okay. And but, what is the context? But how I'm going to allow you, this? just like most Americans, to read the book. But this isn't in the book. About, no, no, no. But the talk about the N-word tape is throughout the but book. But you have, heard this Have tape. you read the book? Yes, but have you? Okay. Have you, I have. I answered that question, Savannah. So what's the next question? Just I was curious, the context in which you alleged the president he used the N-word. He was talking about some African Americans in the production okay. during the course of The Apprentice, which is unacceptable. Oh, yeah. Wow, I saw, I saw Hoda right before we went out for the Today Show tease. And Hoda was eating something. She, was like, she goes, it's stress eating. It's stress eating. <laughs> I'm feeling, the, feeling the stress. It was an, an incredible exchange. I felt uncomfortable, too. Poor Savannah. She handled it beautifully. But Omarosa, you know, she approaches a lot of these interviews like she's being attacked with yeah, every question. Yeah, well, look, and Savannah, she's not being attacked. Savannah Guthrie can do an incredibly tough interview. I wouldn't want to be interviewed by Savannah when she's after something this was not a yeah, tough no. interview. I mean, no, it was it like, was, it was so easy. why would you work there it if you almost, say all these mean things about it? it? Was, and she's like, calm down. <laughs> calm down. At the beginning, she's like, we have all the time. Savannah, stop asking me so many questions at once. We have all the time. And at the end, she's like, I have to go. I have to go right now. <laughs> right now. But I will say, you know, Savannah is a dear friend. I know you're friends with her, yeah. too. She's a great friend of mine. And I texted her right afterwards and I said, you never looked more lovely or gracious. Totally. Unflappable. Because I wanted to, like, cry. But you know what? Can I, I just have to say one thing anybody, anybody should remember when they come on somebody else's show is the audience is going to be with the host. Don't attack the host. Yeah. The audience loves Savannah. They, they, it's not a good idea to start attacking the, the host. But, but can, I, can we talk about the actual allegation? Because what everybody's asking is, is this going to be the thing? If there really is such a tape, 
And the tape gets released because she's saying it's going to be an election surprise, that they're going to release this tape. And on it, you're going to hear the president of the United States use the N-word, she says, repeatedly, repeatedly. Does that actually, I mean, the Teflon Don, can he withstand well, even this, that? Tom Arnold was the one who broke this allegation. He's been talking well, about this. And, and all good news Mark stories. Tom Arnold it. is at the heart of well, every big story. Uh, again, uh, you know, <laughs> we've seen that, that things Trump has said on tape have not come out to bite him. Now, this, obviously, the N-word is a very politicized word and would be a, a different case. But what's amazing to me is, is that we're listening to Omarosa, who clearly has studied at the altar of the greatest promotional person yes. of all time, Trump. Well put. And she has, that's what she's done with her career is constantly reinvented herself. When she lost, the, when she left the White House, she went immediately back into reality TV on Celebrity Big Brother, where she was promoting her book. Yeah. Again, okay. she's here promoting her book and us talking about it. All we're doing is driving sales for her book. That's exactly this, right. This is the best case scenario for her book release, and, and she's gotten everything she's wanted out of it. That's this. a very good point. You know, it, I, as to whether it have a political impact, you know, it, you could you could ask yourself that question. You could also ask yourself whether if the president were caught on on camera saying you can grab women by the P word and do whatever you want to them when you're a celebrity, would that sink him? As it turns out, no, no. <laughs> it wouldn't. Um, and so we'll see whether this actually gets released and whether the American people will respond to it if, in fact, it exists. Well, it'll but all be in our books. Megan. It'll be in our books. <laughs> Are you ready to go? <laughs> I'm not Coming up next, there is new drama with Meghan Markle. Both her mother and her father making news this morning. Not all of it good for the royal family. We'll be right back. We're back now with our panel, NBC's own Stephanie Gosk and Jenna Bush Hager, plus our friend Matt Eisman. And we want to talk about the new royal couple, Meghan Markle. Uh, her mother and her father both making news this morning. So it turns out her mom, Doria, may be moving to the UK, which why wouldn't you, right? It's like she's there. She lives in a castle. Her grandkids are going to be raised there. So amen to that, I say. She's so lovely. But the dad is a different story, as you know. Thomas Markle. Now, Mickey gave yet another interview, uh, the royal family loves when he does this, and said um, to the Daily Mail that Harry, Prince Harry, called him, Thomas Markle, before those stage paparazzi photos that he took, and, he, they, and Prince Harry asked Thomas Markle if it was true that he had staged them, and Thomas Markle says he lied to the prince and told him, no, I was being measured for a hoodie. <laughs> Which is like, who? What a bad lie! Yeah, like, like, custom tailor, right? And yeah, you just um, go to American Apparel. Harry called him back after the story broke and said, "This never would have happened if you had listened um, to me." This is what Thomas claims Harry said to him. And then Thomas Markle says, "Here's the capper. Maybe it would be better for you guys if I was dead. Then you could pretend to be sad." Can I tell you my own reaction to this? Is cry me a river. No. I mean, like. He's getting a little too much enjoyment out of playing the victim here. I know, but I would also say, in his defense, and I agree with you, and he has given some reprehensible interviews and this whole staging of the, of the hoodie. The hoodie, but, but, the hoodie, right? But I would also say, having, having lived in the U.K. for a number of years, those tabloids are merciless. And when they see someone that they see as vulnerable, they will go after him. And clearly this guy was vulnerable. You had the tabloids going in for the kill. Yeah. They gave him money. They sold his story. He was able to sell his story. So they, they should have protected him more? They, the royals should and, and the tabloids want nothing more than that piece of information that's going to get at the but, royal family. Yeah. That's what drives them. So that happened months ago. We talked about this months ago. Yeah, before he's the marriage. still giving interviews. I mean, I get that one time, but, you know, 45 interviews later. Right. No wonder about they're your daughter. Cutting, they're, no wonder they're cutting off contact because they talk to him and then he goes and reports what they yes. said. Yeah. It's like, he, is this my parent or is this a, also, a reporter? as a parent, your job is to protect your children. Yeah. This is not protecting his little girl. Like, right. That yeah. bothers me, and I get it mm. once. Like, he probably got tricked into it. I understand. Totally. But 45 times later, right. and that's an exaggeration. <laughs> and then he's like, poor me. Every but, day. would be better if, if I were dead. It's like, oh, come on. That's yeah. really sad. And, Stop and it's it. really sad that a family, that everyone has their family issues, but that these are getting played out on the national, international stage. And we keep yeah. talking yeah. And about it. And it's yes. probably not going to be resolved. And this guy just seems like... Uh, that he and Megan were, were really estranged, and this is not a good time to try to fix it, or a good way to go through doing it, wearing hoodies in the tabloids. Right. A little longer in the strings. Right. A little longer in the strings. Right. I, I, I don't know. The one is the... Privacy, you know? I know. Just, like, 
dignity, mm -hmm. right? Right? Like, even if you're not a royal, uh, just for your child's sake, choose the dignified but route. What pressure for the royals? I mean, you think about Princess Diana and what she went yeah. through, and and this unhappy marriage that she was trying to mm -hmm. survive, and just the fact that these people. They, they surrender their lives for their country. And I think if you've watched The Crown on well, Netflix, say, you see an element of it. I can't wait for yeah. The Crown in 20 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That crown that Mila and Poppy and all of our kids are going to be watching, it's going to be juicy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, great to see you. Now, listen, I have to tell our audience that you can catch Matt hosting the Philadelphia Finals of... American Ninja Warrior. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. It's one of the best shows on television. Right here on NBC. We'll be right back.